last two lessons we've talked about calories and we've talked about protein and today we're going to be talking about carbohydrates what they are what their use is how you can ensure you're getting enough and the right kinds to help you see long-term weight loss success first and foremost I want to go out and say that carbohydrates are not inherently bad nor the reason for body fat gain as with all things, weight gain comes from eating too many calories, and you can do this in any form. If you eat too much protein, if you eat too many carbohydrates, too much sugar, or if you even eat too many vegetables, if you go over your calories because you're eating too many vegetables, you will gain body fat. So carbohydrates are not the enemy, but they do have some interesting things about them that make them more challenging to rein in to ensure we're not overeating. Okay, so carbohydrates are easier to overeat and that can sometimes make them problematic for us. But more on that in a second. First and foremost, what are carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are our body's main source of energy. Okay, so all carbohydrates we eat are broken down in our body to glucose molecules, which are sugar, but molecules of glucose that we then use as the gasoline to fuel our body's processes. Okay, so that's very important to understand. Now, there are two different kinds of carbohydrates. There are complex carbohydrates and there are simple carbohydrates, what are commonly referred to as simple sugars. Okay, now the difference is in their molecular structure. Without getting too sciencey, just briefly, I want to mention that simple carbohydrates are singular molecules of sugar. Okay, of this glucose. And so what happens is when we eat this food, it digests rather quickly and it releases all of these glucose molecules into the bloodstream at one time to be used for energy. This is why foods that have a lot of simple carbohydrates or a lot of sugar, in other words, then you'll notice a big spike in energy almost immediately after eating these foods and then usually a big crash shortly thereafter where you feel very lethargic and very tired, commonly referred to as a food coma. Okay, so if you get this big rush of energy, that also means you're gonna use it all very quickly and then it's all gonna be gone and you're gonna get a crash of energy thereafter. Complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, are going to be strands of glucose. Okay, and so when our body digests these strands of glucose, instead of releasing all of these glucose molecules into the bloodstream at one time, we have to break each molecule off of the chain and then we can release it into the bloodstream. Now, our bodies don't wait to release these glucose molecules, okay? We're not gonna sit there and break these chains of glucose into these individual molecules and then release it all at once when we're done. We're gonna break a molecule off and release. We're gonna break, release, break, release. So what happens with complex carbohydrates is you're going to get a more sustained energy. It is not gonna be as much of a spike. There's also, though, not gonna be as much of a crash thereafter. So complex carbohydrates, carbohydrates that are low in sugar, are usually going to give you a more sustained, longer lasting energy without the crash or feeling lethargic later on. So for that reason, complex carbohydrates could and should make up the majority of your daily carbohydrate intake so that you get this long lasting sustained energy and you don't have to worry about the negative aspects of having a lot of simple sugars at one time. But all in all, these glucose molecules, whether from complex or simple carbs, are going to be used the same way in your body. So one isn't inherently bad than the other, it's just in how it's going to make you feel throughout the course of the day. Now, how can you decide what's a complex and what's a simple carbohydrate is by looking at the nutrition label. If you look and you'll see that there are total carbohydrates in grams, and just underneath that, you're going to see fiber, which is the third type of carbohydrate that doesn't contain any calories, but it's also not digested or used for energy by your body. So more on that uh, later. But sugar, on the other hand, is going to be listed right under fiber under total carbohydrates. If a food has a certain number of carbohydrates and it doesn't have any sugar, or if the grams in sugar is different than the grams of total carbohydrates and not accounted for by the fiber, then you know that the food with no sugar but still has carbohydrates is going to be a complex carb. Because again, a simple carb is just sugar or sugar in any of its forms. So if it has sugar and that accounts for the majority of the total carbohydrates, it's probably a simple carb. 
But if it's got carbohydrates that are not sugar, then you can consider it a complex carbohydrate. And again, the majority of your carbs coming from complex carbohydrates is going to be super important for making sure you have that long lasting energy throughout the day. Now, how many carbs should you eat of the total makeup of your diet is really gonna be dependent on how active you are. So again, because carbs are our main source of energy, they're also the best source of energy for intense, rigorous physical exercise. You want to make sure you are getting enough of these carbohydrates to supply the energy you need for those workouts. In general, what I would recommend is you aim for anywhere between 30 and 50% of your total calories coming from carbohydrates. And in the last video with protein, we learned that one gram of protein has four calories. And to make things super easy for you, one gram of carbohydrates is also equal to four calories. Okay, so you can help that in determining how many grams of carbohydrates you need based on your calorie goal. But again, for most people between 30 and 50% is going to be the most advantageous for you. Now, so there's some individual preference with carbohydrate and that some people will find that carbohydrates are highly palatable and will oftentimes make them hungrier throughout the day if they're eating a large amount of carbohydrate. So if this is you, if you find carbs make you hungrier and you're less likely to be able to control yourself later in the day, then you may find that hitting that lower percentage of daily carbs is going to be more advantageous for you to stick to those other important goals throughout the day. If you find you don't have this issue, or if you're really involved in a strenuous, intense physical exercise program, then having that higher percentage, closer to 50 of carbohydrates, is probably going to be better for you. Okay, But again, anywhere between 30 and 50% is more than enough. But takeaways from this video are that carbs are not bad. There's a difference between complex and simple carbohydrates, and you want to focus on complex carbohydrates. And anywhere in between 30 and 50% of your daily calories is going to be the sweet spot for carbohydrate intake.